My first reaction was, no, what is this? No, man, no, don't change it. They made me think you were delusional. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm definitely like never gonna be able to change this film. This is the version <laughs> we're gonna be stuck with. We had over 15 interviews, hundreds of hours of footage, and it was all just sitting there on my hard drive. I had the strongest urge to give up, but I knew I had a team that was counting on me to pull this off. I don't really know how you're gonna make a movie out of all this, but good luck. I wasn't editing in a fancy suite with huge monitors and blacked out windows. This was where a majority of the film was cut, in the bedroom of my tiny Hoboken apartment, literally two steps away from my bed. I started pouring over every frame, editing the interviews and taking notes whenever something struck me as important. Hedonic adaptation essentially means our tendency to become dissatisfied with whatever we have. And it's why lottery winners are miserable. It's why car uh, homeowners have three car garages. I had a slab of marble and I just needed to keep chipping away at it. Once I looked through all the footage, I decided to edit the first two minutes. That's it, just two minutes. You have to start somewhere. We've, as a culture, have lost our minds. Every year that passes, there's more stimuli, there's more pressure, there's more options, there's more media, there's more noise, noise, noise. This two minute cut would help us start to develop the tone of the music with Drew and Nate. It doesn't represent the final product, but at least it was the starting point to say, hey, this is where the direction of where it's going. I think we were both sort of organically working on things at the same time. One of the most valuable lessons I learned from working on this project is that you just have to get started. Put your ass in the chair, open up the project, and start working. You rarely know where the day is going to take you, but you've just got to start. The pieces will fall together from there. You just have to trust the process. During this time, I start sending Spire some design requests. Hey, we need this. Oh, we're gonna do an animated sequences in the film. Let's start on that. All right, let's do that. Everyone has a skill set. You can be flexible. You might not recognize this graphic. That's because we decided to cut it. It just felt a little bit too playful. We eventually included a few graphics that were more fitting. The first music scratch tracks that I got from Drew and Nate, I played from my phone. I was blown away. I know for me, the one song that stood out the most was Minim. That was a song that I'd heard and I was like, this is it. This is what our film sounds like. Yeah, I definitely think that was sort of like the anthem for us. And I think we built everything around that song. Listen to the original Scratch. From the moment those first piano keys hit, I knew that this song would be the inspiration for the rest of the score. In the final master, months down the road, they would build this song up even more. That song to us was like a really emotional one, really thought provoking. And so I think that's why it resonated with the film. We kind of set a rule early on, like we only want like a certain amount of elements, no matter what. And we don't want to go past that, right? But some songs, as they started building, it was so beautiful to kind of pass that limit occasionally. It's crazy how many lessons you can learn in making something like this that draw direct parallels with the whole message of minimalism in the first place, which is it's not about an arbitrary number. It's about is this thing deliberately adding value? For us, it's something that we we're passionate about. I mean, the, lyri the lyrics in themselves, like, Follow me to the end of the line, there's nothing that we let leave behind. The line is kind of like, it's tricky unless you actually listen to it, because it actually says there is nothing we don't, don't leave, leave behind, behind. Yeah. except for your legacy or your relationships, which is like the whole theme of the, of the documentary. When you sent the first cut back, I just remember thinking like, oh wow, like, okay, like there's a story. And then I just remember every cut after that, it just kept getting uh, better and better. The very first version of what we got, comparing that to the final version, there's no, I mean, there's huge, it's huge differences. We went through draft after draft, V1, V2, V3. We shared notes and slowly over time, we refined it. V4, V5, V6. 
We conducted more interviews. I drove down to DC to speak with Jay Austin. We flew out to LA to interview Sam Harris. I spoke with Graham Hill and David Friedlander about their micro apartments. Dan Harris of ABC News about meditation. The fashion and sustainability advocate Shannon Whitehead. Eventually, after an endless amount of versions, we had a movie that we were all happy with. We decided to get this in front of an audience and screen it at Misfit Con, a gathering of inspiring individuals who are following unconventional paths. The theater would be sold out. The turning point was the Fargo incident, as I now like to call it. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. As you can see from their reactions, uh, this story is a little bit painful, at least for me. It was the Friday before our screening, and I gave Josh a call. I told him that for the last month, I'd been secretly recutting the film and I had put together a better version that I wanted to debut that weekend. You were so excited when you called me. I'm like, oh man, I know it's gotten better every time. So it must be even better now. So we go watch it in this hotel room. I, my first reaction was, no, what is this? No, man, no, don't change it. It made me think you were delusional. <laughs> Matt has gone crazy. Like from all the editing, there's mercury in his computer. Something has happened. And it was just sort of reworked in a way that we didn't feel the same connection to it. And it's not because that cut was bad, because that cut was fine. It, it's just what you had before was such a, it was so much better. It didn't really go as well as I'd hoped. And then we had a, there was somewhat of a Skype intervention. <laughs> I felt bad for you being the only one not in the room with us. I don't think like, you know, every single artist could be told by seven, nine people that, hey, like, no, this is not cool. Yeah, well, it was, it was still hard. <laughs> like, and in the moment it was, it was very difficult to hear that. This is gonna sound insane, but secretly, I wanted the film to bomb the next day to prove that I was right. But this is what happens next. Then we screen that version at Fargo, and there's a fucking standing ovation. <laughs> and then I was like, all right, yeah. I'm definitely like never gonna be able to change this film. This is the version we're gonna be stuck with. I think the reason this version sucked is because I was trying to develop some kind of formula for the documentary. I was doubting myself, so I deconstructed other acclaimed documentaries and tried to match ours to it. It just didn't work. I needed to make this my own. So we take this little film that I hate and everyone else loves and submit it to film festivals. And we got into every single one. Con, South by Southwest, Sundance, the list goes on and okay, that's not true. All the major film festivals rejected us. <sighs> we submitted to a lot of festivals. We got into some, not many good ones. I knew that this movie could be better. Luckily, after the festivals, the rest of the team realized that we had missed something, something that was vitally important. On the next episode of Making Minimalism, we try to capture what we had missed. If it doesn't resonate with someone, it doesn't resonate with them. But we wanted to make sure that we actually got them to the message. We've got a theatrical release deadline coming up soon, and I'm starting to wonder if the mercury actually is leaking from my computer. Luckily, I'm not the only one. If I think Matt is delusional, maybe I'm a little delusional too. To see the next episode and to watch more videos on simple living, go to my website, mattdiavella.com.